Okay, so in this series we have discussed quite a few of the most basic fundamental building blocks, structures, and theoretical concepts that you have to work with when learning the guitar. The only one that we didn't really get into was reading music. And on this channel, there are enough videos to get you started learning music and to understand the fundamentals of it to get you going. And for most of you, probably most of the concepts you need to understand in reading music. So basically, at this point, you're good to go. You've got a pretty good understanding of most of the tools that are going to get you improvising, creating, or, or learning other people's songs and get you moving around. So the basic other concept that we need to talk about, a couple different things. We're always going to get come back to the basic concept of practice, practice, practice and making sure that your performance is done well and clear and playing within your means that means playing what you're able to play not what you're not able to play you play what you're not able to play sometimes when you're practicing not when you're performing you work on things to become better that's an obvious concept so the next concept that we want to address is tools to help us so i mean we've got some real basic tools to help us as far as reading music, um, if you're a guitarist, I definitely recommend that you get some type of composition software. I use Sibelius. You can get MuseScore is free. Um, there are countless ones that you can get that will give you sheet music and tablature that you can download stuff that to put into your, into your software and or for composing yourself, your improvisations and your compositions. So that's a, a, a very important piece of software. One other thing that I wanted to talk about is metronomes. You, if you're a guitarist, buy a metronome. Okay, now you can either download one on your phone. I have a really good one on my phone. I have one on my computer. I have one in my DAW. I mean, a metronome is a very useful tool so that you're playing in time. Not all practice will be done playing in time. Sometimes things you just need to work on without a metronome to just practice, to work on things, building up speed and stuff like that, which is really hard to do with a metronome sometimes. It can be very frustrating having to speed it up and slow it down all the dang time when you're practicing. But once you start getting to a point to where you're really practicing something and playing it well at a certain tempo and, 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 and working on being able to play things faster and faster to be able to play them in time um, the way they're supposed to be played or the way you want them played in the tempo you want them to be played in, a metronome is a very important tool so that you're able to play things. It will help you to become in time. A lot of times I'll use my foot, but I learned that a lot of times my brain will go ahead and just, you know, make adjustments on the fly as I'm going where the metronome will not adjust for me. The metronome is in is a computer and it was never going to, you know, adjust for what I'm doing. I have to be in time all the time with it. So it's a very important tool. Get one. So the next thing we want to talk about is composition software. Here's a couple pieces that I want to show you. Um, that I have, but anything that's going to do that will be very helpful. And so let's take a look at them. All right, the first one, this one right here is called Musician. Um, you can see it written right up here. This one is basically for music theory to understanding music theory and practice. You have a whole lot of courses that you can go through, different levels for studying different types of music theory that you're dealing with that's not direct, directly related to the guitar but it basically if you go through the whole thing that it's got a really good it, it this one's this one I got for when I went to Full Sail University and it's you know pitch rhythm terms and symbols harmony composition general knowledge instruments instrument recognition instrument keys you know, something like this is really cool, and it's something to look into. Take a look at it. And, you know, it's not that much money, and if you're serious about learning to be a musician and guitarist, it can be a very useful tool. The second thing, next one that I wanted to look at, is I have another piece of software here called Guitars Layers. And Guitar Layers, this piece of software, I have it laid out. It's a really cool piece of software, and it basically... I've set up on this to where I've got 
it basically you it's for a Mac but you can get different pieces of software for different computers and things like that that this piece of software I've got this written on here so I've got like the interval systems written with the intervals names from any given root that you can change to intervals by degree intervals by note name different scales the different scales that I like to use written out here so I can use them as reference bunches of different scales and if you look at my series on scales you've seen the scales that I recommended that you learn to have a basic knowledge of the most fundamental scales modes different things on different modes chords we went through on the video that I showed you on chords and went through basic harmonies the basic chords triad structures and things like that arpeggios tonal chords that way this piece of software is set up to really be able to experiment on the fretboard not always on the guitar and seeing where things are laid out in different keys in different in different keys and different scales and different modes on the guitar and all kinds of things like that it's a really cool piece of software that I really recommend something similar to this and if you investigate it some you can find, probably more than likely find something similar to it to really help you um, to you know check your theory and to double check things or to in your compositions to reference things or in your improvisations for reference and, and investigations and things like that it's a really good piece of software to look into and check into so that's another one the next thing I'll talk about is a DAW now you can get um, the basic just a DAW without buying any of the other hardware a basic DAW will play probably through your computer system and your speakers you can lay out different um, drum tracks it will have like you can get like sample loops that have drum tracks basic rhythm sections basic bass sections um, things like that and even without buying any hardware that most of the time that you can get to I mean they've got like they've got keyboard instruments drum um, sequencers and drum machines in them and almost standard in any DAW that you can create basic rhythm patterns with drums you can create different bass patterns with keyboards and to make up uh, you know tracks to improvise with and it's a really cool tool to have it in the background it's in time it's got it's basically you've got a metronome going you can create your own backing tracks very simply even if you can just do one note at a time you don't have to be even be able to play all these chords and almost a lot of the dolls will have things like quarters in them that will create chords from notes you start with and it's a it's a huge tool for you to practice with because even just practicing your improvisations you can be doing something like on the I think it was lesson number nine where I just did the loop in D showing you how to res you know some concepts of resolving and the importance of that that you can just make up basic loops to practice have something going on in the background it motivates and it also gives a little bit of co a connection more musically as you practice so I mean it's really cool and also you can get backing tracks you can download backing tracks and drag them right into your DAW and 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 just open up your DAW have you know backing tracks laid out all over the place ones that you really find that are really useful for you to practice to you know it, besides the ones you just create on your own then it doesn't take that much and the concept of that just even from the improvisational point of view and using backing tracks and things like that that it will force you to become a little bit more musical as a musician and it's going to introduce you a little bit more to rhythm you're going to take a little bit more closer look at what's going on in rhythm um, when things are jiving you know when they're not what rhythms work really good for things you're practicing um, uh, other things like bass lines how bass lines you know if they are very simple how easy they are to improvise over and if they get more complicated how it can cause dissonance in your improvisations and cause you to reevaluate how you're playing things that's going on because you're you can basically be setting yourself up playing in a band with very little effort and very little time with a little bit of help you know that you know that you have it in your mind that you're trying to do and do some really cool stuff and it makes your practices 
and your improvisations and your learning of the things we've talked about so far in the series and applying them in a much more musical band oriented way to where you've got backing you've got more sound you are applying things you're practicing to to a much more full area rather than just be you and your guitar in a room that you've got a lot of other stuff going on that it may not sound like it but it's really going to it, it can really open up a lot of worlds in your practice because it will as you experiment around with creating improvisational tracks and creating your own and downloading you know other um, improv tracks that other people have created that you will start to understand other musical things that will make you a much better musician that's going to make you a better guitarist because you're going to hear other things going on that are directly related to how your guitar and your guitar work interacts with the other things going on in music in any type of situation where you're playing with other musicians bass players drummers keyboardists all kinds of things what's well, going to really introduce you to things that are happening with harmony and consonants and dissonance things that you can do things that you can't do with other things interacting with you in a multi multi instrumental um situation um band quote unquote so i mean it's a huge tool just for that and plus i mean you've got uh, you've got all this other sound to create any kind of improv that you want whether you're playing pentatonics and you're practicing your pentatonic runs or you're planning practicing your blues runs or you're practicing your major or minor scales or you're practicing other modes or you're practicing the lip mix a lydian mode or the lydian mode or you are going to practice something like the harmonic scale or one of its modes or the melodic scale or even diminished or whole tones or or augmented scales and any number of different things that you can create things behind it to and it's really going to develop your understanding of what's happening in, of it in working with other instruments and musicians um, with yourself as a guitarist which is going to force you to become a better guitarist most definitely because you've got band in the box anytime you want you got a full band there that'll do anything you want at, at, at a given word you are in command of the whole dang band at any given time to to do whatever you want to have them back you the way you want them to back you and do what you want to do to back what you're trying to do so that you become a better guitarist it's a huge tool and the next thing is in composition even a free doll like audacity that there are huge compositional tools um, for most there's a lot of guitars even something like logic if you got logic from you know logic from that's a it's not a really super complex DAW but for a whole lot of guitars it'll do a whole lot of what they do it's very it's pretty intuitive for even even an intermediate guitarist in creating compositions drum tracks keyboards bass vocals all kinds of things so that's very and and it's a huge concept because in creating your songs yourself and having them recorded and doing it yourself and working with it and talking to other people it's going to introduce you to the other instruments to where you're in command of them and you are going to directly relate them to your music theory and understand that all of them working on the same music theory they're just a different instrument which is a huge thing to get in your head that they're another instrument they're voicing it may be a little bit different but they're working from the same musical theory concepts and they have to work together within those same musical concepts and they have to be able to function well together in any type of cons composition and it's a huge tool to use so that's without even buying any hardware besides a computer you can do that very simply and probably without buying any other you know other plugins that they talk about or other um, soft synths you know um, and and uh, drum machines most of them will come stock with the basics that you need to do what you want to do and you can buy more as you get into it if you want so it's a those are huge tools so the next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of hardware. I mean, basically, you can get on the internet and go to like I use Studio One Three. I have Pro Tools. I have Logic. I've got quite a few of them. You can get a package deal from a lot of them for a very 
small amount of money and you can buy used ones used package deals and or used equipment or buy the equipment separate an interface a microphone a decent condenser font microphone and a decent a decent dynamic microphone even a small two channel interface a couple monitors and a small keyboard you know a small they have like a small keyboard that's like just a short keyboard you know that's you know maybe about that big or something like that that you can sit there and use for comp composing does that make sense that is midi capable that will run into your to your interface or your computer and there's not a whole lot other than you need to buy from that and you know besides you know and then just and it's not that much money it really isn't and it really help you develop as a guitarist becoming more of a guitarist that's more being a musician oriented does that make sense because then you're going to think about your guitar theory more because of its inner reaction and its interaction and it's how it has to correlate with other instruments even drums as far as timing or keyboards as far as harmonies and consonants and dissonance and what things work together well and the bass player and vocals you know well what kind of a harmony can i put on that going on it's really going to develop you more as a musician which is going to reflect right back on how what how what good of a guitarist you are because it's not as much going to develop some some of the things aren't as much as development as your guitar capabilities as much as your development as a musician what's going to reflect directly back on your your capabilities and your abilities as a guitarist and it will really help you develop what kind of style oh, oh excuse me <laughs> what kind of style that you really want to focus on because you've got all the tools to focus on any type of genre you want and work within it and learn more about that genre because you can reconstruct it inside the DAW with the drum machines with the keyboards with the bass on the piano or you buy a bass you know and and reconstruct the things to have a better understanding of what's going on so that you're better able to be a guitarist in that arrangement in that musical arrangement with those other instruments you will become a better guitarist and a better musician working with them instead of just being the guitarist because you know unless you're a classical guitarist or something like that or you know you're going to be joe satriani or you know eric johnson or something that you that you know it's just the guitar and everything is just backing that you know it, you're you know you're it's good to be cool even if you're one of those campfire song people that you like to play the acoustic guitar and just play the acoustic and love playing those songs that having a dawn being able to put backing tracks on there and it's good it may make it a lot more fun you'll have a lot more fun playing them you have a lot more fun sharing what you're doing um it, it, it's just a lot more fun and you can rec you know open it up anytime you want and and start playing along with any song that you've made you might even be able to find backing tracks for those songs you're working on and throw them in your DAW and I mean there's innumerable numerous tools for working with music in the DAW the whole DAW I've got a full production music studio and there's there's huge amounts of tools for helping you develop as a guitarist inside the DAW that are going to help you understand so much more about what's happening musically in a multi-instrument environment that's going to make you define your your space and yourself as a guitarist much more much better does that make sense so i kind of want to address that in this video because we've talked about a whole lot of the basic tools and i just kind of wanted to talk about some other tools that you really should look at getting that are going to really help you to develop as a guitarist and as a musician that at that point if you've gone to this point in the series and you're watching this series then at this point i really recommend these tools for you because i have found that a lot of times that with these tools that you're going to really find that you can find most of the answers you need to find yourself when you start getting into more advanced theory you're going to have a lot of questions but you will find that like most guitarist that you're going to start trying to improve yourself and 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 work on your style and work on your technique and things like that which you're going to be doing alone most of the time so these tools are going to be very helpful in helping you being able to be more productive in your time 
alone and, and you know, investigating, practicing, and creating to better yourself as a guitarist. And then it's from there, at this point, the only thing we really want to start talking about after this point in the series is really advanced theory, you know, and that's going to be really dependent on what you're trying to do as a guitarist. And we'll start addressing some of those things. But it's these tools that I really recommend you get so that you can really start utilizing having things to go get answers and, and to evaluate things that are happening on your own and to really have a good set of tools besides the knowledge that we've talked about up to this point to really work with what you have and to make sure that you, there's no question you know you get some software that's musical software composition software the other piece of software we talk about a DAW that you can get it worked out pretty well a lot of things on your own researching yourself right from your computer you know to figure out what exactly is going on there and what is happening there as far as you know the theory and you know the the app the application of what you're trying to do and you know how sound is the application so that you have more confidence in what you're trying to do as a musician and as a guitarist but like i said i do recommend all those pieces of software and that hardware package that i had just talked about it's not that much and i recommend it if you're a serious guitarist that you really invest in that and spend some time you'll have a blast and you will definitely become better acquainted with all the musical concepts and instruments that you're dealing with and what you're trying to do so that you become a better guitarist and in a group setting in a multi-instrumental setting so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope that made sense i hope that was real simple to understand and then i made it very easy to understand a lot of more advanced DAWs like Pro Tools and things like that can be kind of advanced. You know, they're not, I've got like MATLAB for audio engineering and it, they're not that advanced, but some of the tools are advanced, but you'll find that, that the basic usage of a lot of things you're going to do at first aren't going to be that hard to learn. The learning curve isn't that great and you will pick it up probably pretty quick and there's mountains of tutorials to help you in whatever type of DAW that you want to to look at and I, I suggest you look at them and I suggest you know I mean even something like Logic is a really great tool it's a very simplistic middle of the road DAW that is very intuitive for somebody who's not a quote unquote you know audio engineer you know that uh, no offense to them as a DAW but it's intuitive and it's it's a lot simpler to work with it's not so much audio engineering, you know, that kind of viewpoint as it is just, you know, make some music. You know, does that make sense? So I, I hope that didn't come off sounding bad, but I, I do recommend that kind of a middle road DAW for someone who's trying to do that until if they decide they're going to be a music production person, they really want to study audio engineering. That's what a DAW like that's for is doing audio engineering. And you can spend a lot of money. I've got in my home studio, I mean, I, I did it is, I've got a pretty good understanding of audio engineering and I kept it as simple as possible. And I still probably spent about $15,000 so and a lot of that was software i mean uh, things like you know rx6 advanced matlab um all kinds of music production suites you know like isotope music production suites i, I spent quite a i mean and i've got a ton of other um you know uh software that work in conjunction with my DAW that it, it can add up so you can be careful that you buy what you need and don't buy, go out and buy you know a million dollars worth of equipment that you're not going to ever use does that make sense so I hope you enjoyed the video I certainly hope that helped you because at this point I think some of those tools are going to be helpful to help you progress from this point so I think that probably the rest of the videos that we put on, we are going to address some advanced theory when I get some time. But uh, these tools here, asking questions about these tools and asking the questions that you really need to ask to get really good answers for what you're trying to do and where you're at in your 
development by this point in the series that your questions should be fairly easy and well defined to get some really good answers so peace up love i hope you enjoyed the series so far i'll see you in the next video the next video is we're going to start talking about advanced theory